everybody. Uh, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, another segment, Riding with Rick. The more laid back uh, engagements for the Black Voice Channel. Look, uh, not gonna be long, but let's, you know the routine, so let's go through it real quick. Look, number one, if you believe in what we're doing, if you believe in the work we've done for decades, you know the work, look in the description box, click the link, show some love, show some support. That's always needed. If you don't know, click the link that takes you to the site so you can familiarize yourself with what we do outside of the content on the Black, content on the Black Voice channel. If you like what you hear today, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. Now, let's get into this. I'm going to cover two things today, get it out of the way, because I don't want to just be bumping up video after video, so I'm going to try to put it all in uh, one quick pass. We're going to talk about uh, this coach at Colorado State. Uh, I'm not going to even say his name. I know his name, but I'm not going to say his name. You didn't heard it. It doesn't even matter. Uh, taking a shot at Dion. I'm going to talk about what, where that comes from and how it relates to the stuff we do on this channel, how it relates to the black identity, how it relates to respectability, politics, how it relates to so many other things that we tend to participate in to be a part of their world. And I'm going to tell you what's going on with that. Love him or, like, love him or hate him, uh, one of the things that you've got to acknowledge about this uh this man, and I'm talking about Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, is that he keeps defying the odds. Uh, and what you'll find is a lot of times we don't like that because we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned to be in the box. We've been conditioned to be compliant. We've been conditioned to act as we're told. We've been conditioned to not uh, rock the boat. And anytime one of us does something that we know makes them uncomfortable, we do what it takes to level the field or to let at least those who are in our periphery know we're still a part of the team. And that's what you get with that. And I'm going to go into that. And then I'm going to talk about the need to boycott Denny's, and I'll explain that in a minute. But this whole thing with Dion, the coach from Colorado State, a black coach, Colorado State, uh, who uh, the Colorado Buffaloes, Dion's team, is playing on tomorrow, uh, decided that he would take a shot at Dion. These shots haven't gone well so far. It's uh, basically 0-2 for the people taking shots people that were wishing him losses in week one people the coach in Nebraska had something smart to say and each time uh, Dion and his team have shown up and this is to me more than football I love football I watch football uh, at every level from peewee all the way up to professional I watch it I love it I grew up playing it um, and you know, I love the physicality of it. I love the level of skill set. And anything that raises competitive juices, uh, you know, I get I get a level of excitement out of. So I enjoy it. But there's so much more than football. This is a microcosm of a much bigger issue. And I'm not going to go all the way through this because this is a ride with Rick segment. It's not that long, so I don't want to get too, too deep on this. But what you got to understand is got one black man who is doing it his way he's got a bunch of white men upset with him because he's doing it his way because he's built his brand so strong they can't do what he can do he's built a brand that comes with and I, it's not just because I'm famous it's the reason I'm famous I'm famous because I did something at such a high level I'm considered the goat at what I did and now I want to come help you get the best out of your life and get to do things. And so now he's executing things that is really exposing a lot of coaches. Because once he dipped into the portal, he started pulling people. You're starting to find some people who lost some people aren't as good of coaches as they are. They just able to monopolize the talent. Not going into names right now. That's for another time. 
if I admit, we have these discussions on a daily basis at the cigar lounge. But anyway, that that that's that, the point is this: the Colorado coach has been at. I mean, Colorado State coach has been there for three years. He hasn't been able to do in three years what Dion has done in six months, and he doesn't like it because Dion is doing it in a way that he possibly can't. He, he probably can't do it. And it is a reflection, number one, on where he really is and what he's capable of doing. And the sad thing is, you're never not in the game until you choose you're not in the game. You may have to change the way you play because you might not be playing by the same rules that everybody's playing by. You might not be doing things the way you should be. But I don't think anybody is doomed to mediocrity. But you can't show up and see the thing is he's been doing it the way he was told he had to do it at Colorado State this is how you build a team this is how you go in you go in and you do XYZ and see that's not working right now then Dion De came along and totally blew that up and said no I'm going to come in and Dion was even saying you know give me two or three years I'm going to do this but I'm coming in and immediately changing the culture just in changing the culture what he was able to do in the transfer portal has totally changed that entire environment. They, that school, after the first game when they beat TSU, I mean TCU, when they beat TCU that first game, within an hour and a half, they had raised $28 million for the athletic department. That's the money that they didn't have to pay Dion when they signed him to the contract. They just signed him and they hoped that they would be able to produce it. This guy has produced so much money for that school and revenue, but he's also created avenues and opportunities for his kids and the people he loved. He loves, and so he's done what he needed to do for him. He got what he wanted. He's still getting. Uh, man, I'm, I'm just looking at it, and the thing is, yes, that's him, and yes, that's capitalism, but the, let's be realistic if we're going to be realistic here. Until we have a sense of autonomy, until we have a way to come off the grip, capitalism is a part of the reality, and the thing is not to become consumed or controlled by it, but to learn how to use it to your benefit. If you're not going to play the capitalism game, you got to go get you a little piece of land that you can get without capitalism. Tell me how you're going to do that. And then you got to sit up and you got to farm it. You got to do what you got to do and you got to make connections and networks. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that that's something that really, truly removes you from the need to have to play along with these games that are being played. But if you're going to get in the game, get in the game to win it. Don't get in the game for... Uh, the sake of saying I'm in the game, for the sake of saying I'm doing what they're doing, for the sake of saying I got in and, you know, whatever. I don't want to be nobody's token black. That's why I've always ran my own stuff. You know, it's not as big as a bunch of other places that have offered me gigs and, and a lot of prestige probably would have came with those gigs, but you would have controlled my intellect and my intellectual property. I, no thank you. So that's the thing with this is... This guy, in case you don't know what I'm talking about, this coach decided just out of the blue to come out and say, because, you know, how Dion does his interviews, he says, my my mama taught me that when I'm talking to adults to take off my cap and my glasses and my shades or whatever. And, you know, obviously Dion said, OK, they just keep giving me him ammunition and of course that became bulletin board material and for those of you who don't know what bulletin, bulletin board material is it's when someone on the other team says or does something that's insulting or in some way maligning to your team you write it on the bulletin board and it becomes a port a motivation this board is this board that everybody sees when they're in the facility and it's telling you what that team said or what their coach said or what one of their players said and it's motivating it gets people fired up pride stands up and acts a fool and so it's on the bulletin board now how they handle pride and pride's got this new thing now it's personal they made it personal and it's personal and so when he takes something personal his entire team takes personal takes it personal and i like that because he's teaching them unity he's teaching them uh connectivity and the predominance of this is young black males and he's he, he's looking out for these kids uh, agree with him, hate him or whatever. I'm not here to sell Dion. I'm just sitting up saying what I see. And then the juice it's getting. But anyway, so this guy came out and said that. But what he's actually saying is, look at me, white handlers. I put him in this place. I checked him. I told him off. Because when, it get, when, it, when it's time to step on the field, the numbers don't bode well for uh, Colorado State. This could be ugly. And it's definitely going to be played with a level of intensity 
that's going to reflect the fact that this coach took a shot at Dion. Um, why, outside of trying to prove to his handlers that he's doing it the way it's supposed to be done and that he's not going to get out there or whatever. And then some of us are just so programmed that there's a way to behave and do things that when anybody gets out of that box, we literally get offended for them. We get offended for white people. It's like, hey, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're going to upset them people. You're going to make them mad. I remember that's how uh, Slaves on the Planet, nothing was more threatening to a slave who was thinking outside of the box than a slave who wasn't. And and, and, and it's real, man. You want to talk about who, who was a threat. It's that person that's sitting up there that's looking at you and going, I'm going to tell Massa. Massa going to be mad. Massa say don't do that. And so uh, that's who this cat is. Now, why are we in case you didn't see it, I'm at the gym. Uh, why are we uh, boycotting Denny's? Well, uh, Denny's in South Dakota failed to serve two black truckers. Okay, no big deal. It is what it is. Uh, but they failed, to, uh, and the waitress decides that she doesn't want to serve them. She walks up, snatches the, men, snatches the menus out of their hand solely because they said they were ready to take their order. They were ready to uh, place their order. And she said she 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 chastised them and snatched the means and said she didn't want them and they needed to leave. So then she sends another waitress over to tell them uh, to leave. Or the police was coming because they were had already been called on their way. And so police show up, take them outside, and you know talk to them or whatever. They're not arrested or anything, but they're definitely mishandled. Uh, the complaint is made to Denny. Uh, the, the two guys get an attorney. The complaint is made to Denny's. Denny's issues a press release saying that the waitress involved had been fired. But what Denny's didn't tell in their press release are revealed to the attorneys or uh, those who came to them to get gather information is that the white rape, uh, the white uh, waitress who initiated all this and was fired was actually married to the regional manager. And when you look at they call 911 on these guys. So you understand this wasn't just, hey, could you send an officer out? This was 911. Told those people that these guys were being aggressive, that they were following them around the uh, uh, the restaurant, being belligerent. They never left the table. Luckily, they were filming it. Luckily, they had other people in the uh, restaurant who were willing to vouch for what actually went on and tell the truth. Because uh, it could have got real ugly real quick. But Denny's didn't say anything about the fact that this waitress is married to the regional manager. Now, the person who called 911 wasn't in the restaurant. It was the regional manager. He was 30 minutes away when he called. He called and said whatever his wife had told him had happened. He's on the way. Now, he's pissed off because somebody's pissed off his wife. Now, so he's on the way in and he calls and he tells them all this stuff. And so they go and they send somebody over. Luckily, uh, nothing uh, transpired between the police and the black truckers but Denny's tried to conceal and cover up what was really going on and at what level so this wasn't a rogue waitress this was a culture all the way up to the regional manager at least and now that you look at the cover up you got to sit up and say, okay, it probably runs higher. And then obviously they've got this diversity and inclusion uh, uh, executive who is a black person uh, who actually participated in the cover up. Uh, and again, now we go with that. We're going to do the things the way it's supposed to be done because I want to be a part of this. I want to be accepted. I want to be a, considered a player, you know, uh, in, 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 in playing within the confines and the rules of the game. And so I am going to be pushing. This is just the beginning. I am going to be pushing for a national boycott. I am going to, um, every little ounce I got in me, we have to stop patronizing those who don't respect us, those who don't treat us with respect. We have to stop giving. That's one of the weakest things that happened during the civil rights movement is we were literally pushing to give our money to people who didn't like us. And now we've got to stop doing that. We've got to stop 
giving our money. We are literally funding our own demise. We're financing our own demise. We're pouring into economies and businesses who treat us like crap and who at every chance and every turn will turn around and do something that is detrimental to what we say we want. It's time to stop that. So on that note, look, those are the two things I have to talk about. Uh, but I'm going to be back definitely on this Denny's thing, but I wanted to get it out all in one, one, one riff. So I'm going to get out getting this gym, knock this uh, midday workout out, and then get back in the office. But look, uh, like I said, if you like what you hear, click the like button. Um, click the share button. If you believe in what we're doing, then support it by donating. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys take it. Have a great day. I'm out.